Welcome, everybody, to the last session of KVM Forum 2018. Um, I can see many tired faces by now. Um, hopefully, this will get better during the talk. Uh, I heard that as a last speaker, I'm allowed to talk as long as I want. <laughs> Is it correct? So you better cancel all your, your, your dinner reservations right away, but you'll be able to make your flight tomorrow, so don't worry. So uh, my name is David Hildenbrandt. Um, I'm going to talk today about an interesting topic. It's called Widow Mem, Paravirtualized Memory, or to be more precise, Paravirtualized Memory Hot Plug and Memory Hot Unplug. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the issues we have with Memory Hot Plug and Memory Hot Unplug in general, and also ballooning. Um, we'll then have a brief look at how other hypervisors approach the, the issue in general. And then I'm going to introduce Word OMM, um, basically what the design goals were, what the current state is, um, and what the next steps are. In case there are any questions during the talk, just speak up. As I said, we have plenty of time. <laughs> so in a virtual environment, we usually don't really deal with dims. We have abstractions for that. But still, we are able to hot plug virtual dims into a certain certain machine types, for example, x86. Um, but in addition, we also have this concept of ballooning that has been invented for virtualized environments. But what, what are we actually talking about? Usually when we talk about memory hot block, we mean that we add some completely new memory to a system. Um, so for example, we plug it in, and the operating system will start using it. Memory hot unblock in return means that we remove memory completely from a system. Um, but that implies, in order to remove it, that the operating system makes sure that any memory that was once used on, for example, that DIM has been evacuated to another DIM or to some other memory that's available. Now, um, balloon, ballooning is different, and it, it's, it's usually quite confusing to people because allocation doesn't mean freeing, and freeing means allocation. But don't get confused. So. Um, Balloon inflation simply means that we, as a guest operating system, allocate some memory. We send it to our hypervisor, and our hypervisor can then basically knows then that this memory is unused, and it can, for example, remove the backing storage. So allocation here means actually giving more memory to the hypervisor. And this approach is basically used by some people for memory unplug, which I'm not quite happy about it, but some people think it's usable for them. So um, I'm going to explain later on what the issues are here. On the other hand, balloon deflation is the other, the other direction. Uh, we take some memory that we previously reported to our hypervisor. Um, we free it in our guest operating system, so the operating system is again able to use that memory, um, and everybody's happy. Now, what are the main differences? So um, ballooning is a completely virtual concept for now. Um, on the other hand, memory hot plug and memory hot unplug is basically available on physical and on virtual environments. But the granularity is different. So um, from plugging a DIM, we usually have to plug at least 128 megabyte DIMs. Usually, we plug even bigger ones. I'm not sure if you're even able to find physical 128 megabyte DIMs today on sale. Um, but for virtual machines, this, of course, works. Ballooning usually works on four kilobyte pages, which is like the other extreme. Um, but the interesting point is that memory hot plug in general is very architecture specific. So like we have different hardware interfaces if we have some at all. And ballooning is pretty much not architecture um, um, dependent, except for some quirks related page sizes that people are trying to fix lately. Um, but that in return also um, uh, affects the likelihood of uh, how likely it is to succeed to remove memory from a system or to inflate a balloon. Because, I mean, finding some free page in the operating system and reporting it to the hypervisor is pretty easy. I mean, it's just a page. But freeing up a whole DIM, so evacuating that DIM, and um, being able to remove it is much harder. And it can easily fail. And especially under Linux, we have to um, take certain certain steps to even make it, uh, make it possible at all. So we have to online memory to the movable zone, things like that. I'm not going to go into details. But in general, it's not very easy to unblock memory. Now, what are some issues that we have with memory hot plug and memory hot unblock related to DIMMs in general? Um, 
One important thing is that we have some architectures that simply don't support memory hot block at all. So how could we ever emulate that? For example, S390X is an example where memory hot block in the sense of DIMMs doesn't really exist. Another thing is that we have some architectures that might support DIMMs, but they have no architecture way of notifying the guest about a new DIMM. So for example, on ARM64, as far as I'm aware, you have to do some manual probing in the guest. It's not really what you want in a virtual environment where you just want to add memory and have the guest making use of it. I also mentioned that unblocking is uh, difficult. Uh, under Windows, it's not supported at all. Uh, under Linux, we need a movable zone. Um, but still, if we added memory to the movable zone at DIM and try to remove it, it can still fail. We can run into all different kinds of issues here, uh, especially the zone imbalance, not going into details just so you heard about it. Um, and in addition, because it's an architectured interface for hot plug and unblock, we have certain limits that limit also our flexibility in which we can add or remove memory to the system. So for example, we only have a limited number of ACPI slots. We have only a limited number of MAPs. Um, KVM memory slots is another issue. And also the minimum DIMM size that the guest operating system can actually support is restricted. So for example, uh, on x86 Windows, we can hot plug one megabyte DIMMs, uh, while uh, Linux requires 128 megabyte DIMMs to work at all. And these are some details that limit our flexibility. Now, what are the issues with ballooning? Actually, the list is even longer. I try to distill it to a bare minimum here. Um, from my point of view, um, ballooning, especially with our balloon, is broken by design um, because our guests can basically, and it will in practice, reuse memory that it has previously reported to the hypervisor as um, free. Um, but it doesn't really matter because it can also go ahead and simply fake the statistics of how big the balloon actually is. On the other hand, um, we don't really have a mechanism for a balloon driver uh, in the hypervisor to reject any inflation or deflation request. So it means if we have a malicious guest, our malicious guest can simply do what it wants. Nobody will actually recognize it without uh, taking care in the hypervisor, for example, with C groups or things like that. So it's not really what we want for unblock. The other thing is that it is based completely on four kilobyte pages, um, which makes it somewhat hard to support huge pages in the hypervisor or different page sizes between hypervisor and guest as we have on PowerPC. Another important thing is that compared to memory hot unblock and memory hot plug uh, based on DIMMs, um, balloons are usually completely not NUMA aware and adding that is uh, very difficult and I don't think it can be done for various reasons. Um, and in general, a balloon, ballooning is used in very different use cases, and it is sometimes not really clear what should happen with memory that has been inflated in a balloon. Should you remove it from operating system stats, um, or maybe not, because you're simply sharing memory with your hypervisor like you would do for free page hinting? Um, and one important point is why I also, I also think that um, other hypervisors went for, into other direction is that um, to really add new memory to a system, you need other technologies. So for example, uh, you have to have dim memory hot plug in place in order to add new memory to a system. Um, in return, you could then think, okay, why don't I add memory, for example, using dims and I use ballooning for unplugging? Um, this has another set of issues that I'm not gonna go into the details. Um, but it, in summary, um, both technologies we're combining here are architecture specific and architecture uh, independent. Uh, and then we have all these issues we have with ballooning either way. So um, actually we can do better if we just go into a different direction. Now, Hyper-V and Zen actually decided to go into a different direction. Uh, they have parallelized interfaces to plug and to inter, uh, indicate new memory to a guest operating system. So they are not using, for example, ACPI-based DIM hot plug at all. Um, instead, they have their own interface, and part of that interface is some kind of ballooning to unblock memory and to re-block memory, but also to add completely new memory. Um, they solved the issue of uh, malicious guests by not allowing a guest to uh, access unblocked memory. So for example, on the Hyper-V, if you try to access memory that has been inflated as part of the balloon, uh, by writing to it, you will simply get a, some special kind of page fault, so to say. Uh, 
Um, still, Hyper-V and Sen decided to base their technology on four kilobyte pages, which is not really what we want. They are also not NUMA aware because ballooning in general is not NUMA aware. Uh, and they decided to go different path of how to handle when you reboot with unplugged memory using a balloon driver. Um, usually you, you can do two approaches. Sen decided, okay, if I reboot, um, I'm not going to change any memory layout or, at all. When I reboot, my balloon has to reinf be reinflated in my guest. And that is, of course, an issue if uh, your guest is not malicious, but simply the balloon driver is broken or um, you start into a kernel that doesn't have a balloon driver because at some random point in time, you will essentially crash when you consume more memory than you were intended to. Hyper-V uh, went into the other extreme direction. Uh, when you reboot with an inflated balloon, um, they will simply try to reorganize the memory so when you reboot into the new system, um, you will not have to handle anything related to ballooning. But this is, of course, if you think about re rearranging memory of the guest, um, very problematic, uh, especially when it comes to migration when it comes to uh, NUMA and especially when it comes to DIMMs, because which, which DIMMs do you want to resize? Uh, what do you actually want to do? Um, and this is all a mess when it comes to migration, um, as some of you might know that work on QMU migration related things. So I came up with the idea of WordMM, also providing a power virtualized interface to a guest to plug and unplug memory. Um, it is heavily under construction. Um, there might still be some quirks in there, and if you see some potential problems, please speak up. Um, we can still discuss the idea. But the design goals that I had in mind when working on this are um, that I wanted to have a unified memory hot plug and unplug uh, approach for all architectures. So for example, including S390 um, or other, other architectures that might not have a clean interface. Especially I wanted to avoid mixing technologies like using DIM-based hot plug and virtual based unplug or anything like that. Also, I wanted to be able to manage any size changes completely inside QMU, so without having to adapt, uh, um, add new devices like DIMMs and then having to care during migration that I specify the DIM again on the other side. And when a DIM has been unplugged, this is all a big mess. In my point of view, I wanted to avoid that. Also, I wanted to provide, like the other hypervisors, Hyper-V and send it a safe way to detect if a guest is actually malicious or if it is just... Um, um, touching memory or just making a mistake, um, uh, for example, in the implementation. But that would then mean that I, I don't want to crash my guest, um, which could be a sane guest. So I wanted to have a safe way to detect malicious guests, essentially. Also, I wanted to support different page sizes um, between the guest and host, and I wanted to support huge pages eventually in the long run. Also, uh, NUMA verity is an important point, uh, which ballooning cannot do, and I was also wanted to include that. Now, if we take a look at how people interact with virtual machines related to memory, it is usually like, okay, I want to add some memory to a certain node. I want to try to remove some memory from a certain node, and I want to eventually query, okay, how much memory was actually added or removed, or is my guest operating system even able to make use of that memory that I gave, gave to him? But what we have right now is basically we have to mess with DIMMs and slots and hypervisor and the guest. Um, we might want to use ballooning then, which, which uh, adds another level of uh, complexity. So what WordOMM provides instead is that you create a WordOMM device, assign it to a certain node, uh, assign it a certain maximum size, and you can then simply set a requested size on the device and the guest operating system will try to reach the requested size by, for example, plugging or unplugging blocks. Um, and of course, you can also query the current size of a certain memory device. Uh, this then basically allows you to see, okay, how much memory was actually uh, being used by, by my operating system because it is able to, for example, online it. Now, if we take a look at our guest physical address space, um, we usually have some part of memory that is uh, called boot memory or initial memory, and this is the memory that an unmodified guest operating system will see, so a system that does not have a Wooda or MEM device driver. And this is the important part because whenever we reboot into a guest that doesn't have that driver, it will still boot and it will not make use of more memory that was intended, so we will not classify it as a mal malicious guest uh, in contrast to, for example, a SEN.
Now, in this uh, physical address space, we also have these virtual MEM devices, and we assign them a region in the guest physical address space with the maximum desired size. And the maximum desired size basically specifies, OK, eventually how much memory can we manage with, with such a device. Um, it also has two properties, uh, namely the requested size, which represents from a hypervisor point of view how much memory want, I want this device to consume. And on the other hand, we have the current size, which allows us to get an idea of, OK, is the guest actually able to make use of the device at all? Does it have a driver? Or is there some other issue that it cannot make use of all of that memory? Now, within that reserved memory region, we only have a dedicated initial part that is called a usable uh, memory region that the guest can actually use for plugging or unplugging memory. Um, this is basically a mechanism that is uh, reasonable uh, if you, for example, want eventually to grow your guest to four terabytes, but initially only want to give him one gigabyte because we can then optimize, um, for example, the size of memory slots in the hypervisor or dirty bitmaps because um, we don't want to do all, do all that for four terabytes because it will simply consume way too much memory in the hypervisor. So in general, when our guest driver boots up, it will detect these devices, it will um, identify the uh, requested size, and it will then plug as, uh, the number of blocks that it needs in the usable region in order to reach the goal, add them to the guest operating system, everybody's happy. And especially because we have different virtual mem devices, uh, we can assign them to different nodes. And this way, we basically get um, NUMA Averity for free. So we can simply set a request to a device, and hopefully, the guest will process it. Now, there are different terminologies involved here. Uh, one thing is, for example, the current size. As I said, we can always track how much memory the guest has actually blocked. Um, the other thing is the requested size, where we can tell a device or a guest via the device to add or remove more memory. Uh, the block size is basically the granularity in which we can do memory hot plug or memory hot unplug, uh, which can be configured later on, which is nice, for example, when we're talking about uh, huge pages in the hypervisor. And we have a, a maximum region size that simply represents, okay, with this device, eventually I can grow to a certain number of gigabytes, terabytes, whatsoever. Um, importantly, when we request our guests to plug memory, what we do in QM is that we track the state of that block or these blocks in a bitmap. So we always know that our guests cannot play dirty games with us. Uh, and eventually, if we decide to protect unblocked memory, that is the point where we unprotect it so our guests can use it. On the other hand, when we unplug blocks in QMU, so triggered by the guest, uh, we again track the state in a bitmap. Uh, we can, for example, M advice don't need a memory. That means that the backing storage will be dropped. And we can, for example, protect that memory using use of fault of the write protect, um, which would basically not allow our guests to write to the memory anymore, resulting in more backing storage getting used. So, I don't like to call what a MEM a ballooning solution, especially not that type of ballooning, um, because it basically differs quite a lot to the other ballooning approaches that we have. It is somewhat similar, but still, I, I think it's different. One of the main points is that we work on bigger blocks. So it's configurable. You could basically go down to four kilobytes, but usually it will be more in the area of one megabyte, for example, to keep the bitmaps that we need in QMU uh, reasonable small. Also, um, it is an important part of the concept is that whenever uh, we request our device to unplug memory or plug memory, it will only operate on its assigned memory region or not on the whole system memory like ballooning. Uh, so, for example, you cannot go ahead and remove your BIOS like you once were able with ballooning and with our balloon. This will simply not work. It's just the assigned memory region that the device operates on. Another important thing is that we can now detect malicious guests because if we reboot into an operating system that is not aware of these restrictions, um, for example, that we have this concept of the maximum region size, um, usable region size, a requested size, um, an unmodified guest will simply not see it. And in return, it will only make use of the boot memory and everybody's happy. 
Of course, as soon as you want to make use of these devices, you need a device driver. But at that point, we can assume that we don't have a malicious guest anymore. And of course, using the bitmaps to track the state, we hinder our guests from playing like these dirty games, like trying to unplug uh, uh, the same block twice in order to reduce the amount of memory that it is using. Uh, in QMU, it makes our life way easier um, because as our device only works on its assigned memory region, we can basically resize that memory region if we want. Um, we can only protect this specific memory region and not as we heard in previous talk, we have to worry about all different kinds of memory types we have in our guests in order to protect them. Uh, on the other hand, it makes our life in the guest a little bit harder because for unplugging memory blocks, we have to find free memory regions in a certain memory range, and that is a range allocator, and that's not really available uh, in, in Linux so far. So that will require quite some work. Now, what are the planned steps from a Linux guest point of view? So initially, uh, I think I'll go ahead and implement memory hot block of whole sections. So this is basically the smallest granularity of DIMMs you would be able to block, um, but via the concept of root mem because it is basically fairly easy to reach, so it's the lower hanging fruit. Next point would then be to implement a mechanism to hot plug smaller granularities to our guests. So for example, to hot plug one megabyte chunks uh, or two megabyte chunks or, or even smaller ones. And essentially the ultimate goal is that we are also able to then hot unblock these smaller chunks. Um, and that is then the longer, um, the part that will require way more work, so to say. But I mean, Rome wasn't built in one day, um, probably not in one year either, so I still have plenty of time to work on that. And I think especially already having memory hot plug of sections on its own for certain architectures is already quite an improvement. Um, so this is like the lower hanging fruit, as I said. Well, Windows guests are uh, difficult. Um, I don't... I. I didn't really invest a lot of time trying to figure out if it's possible. And actually, um, to be honest, I don't care at all. But uh, we should have the interfaces in Windows, but they're not supported. So I mean, driving a rider with unsupported interfaces is not going to work, so we'll need some help from Microsoft folks. The current state is basically that I had a running prototype both in QMU, uh, both in Linux, guests. Um, but it turned out that we'll have to do quite some more work on Linux guests and we have to do some rework on the QMU side. So what I'm working on right now is basically teaching what our own devices to become memory devices. That means that I can assign a memory region and guest physical address space to a uh, our device, which will also be necessary for other projects like Vodo PMEM, for example. Um, and the next step will then be to slowly go into the direction of managing this usable zone, um, reserving the, the, the big memory region, so trying to save space. Uh, we'll then have to explore how can we actually protect memory, so how can we make sure that our guest cannot simply reuse some memory, it has unblocked. Uh, there are different approaches to that, for example, use of fault FD or simply C groups. Um, migration and dumping will be difficult. This also goes back to the problem that we had um, related to the talk of uh, David previously, because um, migration code right now simply goes ahead and assumes this is a RAM block, I'm simply going to dump everything. But if that RAM block has a size of two, ter two terabytes um, and only one gigabyte is used, you certainly don't want to dump that. On the KVM side, we'll need something called atomically resizable memory region, which will be quite tricky to implement, but just so you've heard of it, um, it might also solve other problems related to um, booting and uh, vCPUs crashing when reorganizing memory. Um, that, that will also require quite some work. And on the Linux driver side, we basically will have to go ahead and first um, add a proper interface for device driver to add and remove memory. Um, we have an interface, but it's not sufficient for my purposes. And later on, in the long term, to be able to plug smaller blocks, so not whole sections, we'll have to go ahead and implement some kind of fake onlining, fake offlining of memory blocks. Um, Sen actually uh, does a similar thing when, when onlining memory, but we'll have to do some more work there. And last but not least, um, in the long term, we want to hinder KDAM from accessing unblocked blocks um, 
because right now it would simply go ahead and read whatever it finds. But we also have plan for, plans for that. So um, essentially, this is the state. There's still, still a lot of stuff to do, um, but stay tuned. Thank you so much for your time. Are there any questions? For migration, if you are careful enough, you can only uh, you, we only migrate the things that in the bitmap are value one. So if you are careful enough, well, you initially say the bitmap, you are basically done. Yes. The basically is the important part. So, so I, I would have to invalidate certain parts of the bitmap, and then I would basically done. Yeah. And especially the, 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 the concept of resizing memory regions is already part of the protocol, um, of the migration protocol, and this helps a lot to simply migrate, uh, for example, the resized memory region. It simply works without having to specify anything on the QMU command line, like you would have to do with PC, uh, PC DIMMs, for example. David? Okay. Ah, Christian, yeah. oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> just a comment. I actually really like the, the scheme of just saying I want to add that memory and uh, r remove that memory instead of saying I want to plug a DIM. I think that makes it much more natural what you actually want as a user. That's perfectly good. Thanks. Thanks. So you said the usable, <coughs> the usable region size can grow as you, does that ever shrink or does that only ever grow? Uh, the plan is to shrink it during reboot. But there are some special cases if you're right now dumping or migrating or post-copy live migration, then we might decide to not shrink. But in general, the idea is to shrink, to reboot the, uh, the, the region, and then our guest can still plug whatever it wants in that region. Uh, <clears throat> David, speaking about something we all don't care about, Windows guests. <laughs> yeah, so would it be possible to implement Hyper-V style interface for them? That, like reusing that, 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 the same parts in QMU you are working on, but just making a new shiny VM bus interface. Exactly. That, that's why I was being a little bit direct in that sense, because actually I think the, other, the better approach would be to wire it up to the actual Hyper-V way of doing things. And I think you're the expert there. We, we can certainly talk. <laughs> you are. I'm sorry. Um, so that would make more sense than investing time to implement on interfaces that you're not supposed to use in Windows. You mentioned, unprotect, you mentioned protecting unblocked memory. Yes. Right protecting, specifically. Does you mean, mean why protecting it? You, you mentioned right protecting it. Ah, right protect, Mark. Use of right protect. The thing is that, uh, of course, you... For, for your guests, and for example, for KDump, you want your unblocked memory to remain readable. Um, this will work with anonymous memory, not, but not with huge TLBFS, so we'll need to find a way around that. But um, essentially, whenever the guest would write to unblocked memory, new backing storage would get assigned, and that's the point I want to avoid when talking about 4 kilobyte page backing. But for huge TLBFS, it will get tricky because we don't have zero pages there, and I had some plans, but this is like very, very far in the future. Okay, so thank you. We have to quit the talk now because we are starting to gather for the photo in the lobby. So please move to be on the picture. All right, thanks a lot.